attendance. Uh, a very good morning, students. Today we are going to start a new chapter. That is the ninth chapter, strategies of enhancement in food production. Right. Now this is the chapter of third unit. There are three chapters are there in third unit: eight, ninth, and ten. Eight is a human health and diseases. This is the ninth chapter, strategies of enhancement in food production, and the tenth is. microbes in human welfare so we we'll began with the chapter strategies of enhancement in food production now in this topic in this chapter we going to discuss about the animal husbandry animal breeding and plant breeding techniques right now as the chapter said enhancement in the food production why it requires to enhance the food production at the time of independence in the year 1947 the india has 33 crore of population 33 crore so but if you compare that population with the present situation we are almost crossed the 130 so the population is rapidly increasing and to fulfill the food requirements to this increased population we have to accelerate the food production also to accelerate this food production the conventional methods will not be perfect so beyond that apart from con conventional method we have to implement some other implementations so that we can improve the food quantity along with the maintenance of food quality so we'll discuss all about this in this chapter so today we're going to discuss about the introduction of element animal husbandry then the there are two important managements are there in the animal husbandry dairy farm management and poultry farm management how will manage that and then animal breeding the most important topic okay so there are two types of breeding are there in breeding and out breed so we'll discuss one by one so first we'll start with the introduction of the chapter with animal husbandry now what is due to rapid increase in the human population <coughs> increase in food production is the major necessity now the animal husbandry and plant breeding play a major role in increasing the food production to meet the demand of ever increasing population as the population increases very rapidly we have to supply food for each and every one to fulfill that requirement we should accelerate the demand of food production right so the first topic is about the animal husbandry now what is animal husbandry it is a science of rearing feeding caring breeding improvement and utilization of the domesticated animals what is animal husbandry it is a science of rearing feeding caring breeding improvement and utilization of the domesticated animals now the animal breeding aims at increasing the yield of animals and improving the desirable quality of the produce now in the animal husbandry different types of domesticated animals are used and all these together called livestock right there are different types of animals are there domesticated animals which use all together consider as livestock now what is livestock these are the animals domesticated animals or farm animals who are kept for use or profit out of the total livestock of the world more than 70% of the livestock is belongs to india and china and these are the two most important populated countries right first is china and second is india on the basis of the utility of the livestock the domesticated animals are classified into two categories 
so animal husbandry is refers to the science of rearing feeding caring breeding improvement utilization of the domesticated animals and all these domesticated animals constitutes livestock and out of the total livestock of the po world population 70% of the livestock is belongs to india and china now the depending upon the ability and the utility of the livestock the animals the domesticated animals are classified into two categories now what are they milk giving animals and meat and egg giving animals so one group is especially for the milk production and the second is for the meat and egg production cows buffaloes and goats provides us with milk which provide animal protein and serve as a perfect natural diet milk is also used for preparing curd butter ghee cheese etc all of you know so first group of animals is milk sometimes apart from cow buffaloes and goats camels are also used for milk production right now the second is meat and egg a large number of animals such as sheep goat pigs ducks and fowls that is chickens provide us meat meat and egg so these are the two domesticated animals the two category of domesticated animals one is for milk production and one is for meat and egg production especially ducks and fowls are used for egg production right so this is about the introduction of animal husbandry and livestock now the second most important is methods to improve quality and quantity in animal husbandry are farm managements so two important farm managements we are going to discuss today right dairy farm management and poultry farm management apart from that apiculture fisheries and sericulture also they will discuss later so now what is dairy farm management and what is poultry farm dairy farm management includes the management of cattle and the poultry farm management is related to the poles that is chickens and ducks so we'll discuss the first we'll discuss about the dairy farm management now what is dairy farm management it is the management of animals for obtaining milk and other milk products for human consumption okay so it is the management dairy farm management is the management for the animals for obtaining the milk and milk related products for human consumption it deals with the processes and systems that increase the yield of in and also improved quality of milk now the dairy farm management includes cows buffaloes goats etc now look after the cattle now what are the most important points which dairy farm management includes there are certain points are right the first most important look after the cattle that means housing well give adequate water and maintain disease free we have to provide a particular safe shelter for them then we have to supply a quality water adequate water to them and maintain this is with that means the area the shelter should be protected with all the precautions that means they should disease free always then milk yield is depend upon the quality of breed selected the most important right all cattle cannot produce the same quantity and quality of milk because that is the ability of that particular breed there are so many breeds are there so each and every breed has its own ability to produce milk so milk yield is dependent upon the quality of breed selected then the quality encompasses yielding potential and disease resistance how can we compare the quality breed with the less quality breed the breed which is have more resistant to different diseases and it is able to produce high quantity of milk that is called a high quality breed 
so it is most important in the dairy management that we have to select a qualified breed so that the production should be increased feeding of cattle in a scientific manner feeding of cattle in a scientific manner that is emphasis on the quality and quality of the fodder whatever the feeding is giving them that food should be consist all the nutrients in proper ratio that is the quality and the quantity of the fodder stringent cleanliness and hygiene of cattle and handlers while milking storage and transport of the milk the maintenance of the shelter it should be always clean and hygiene right and then milking then storage of milk and also the transportation of milk so all these activities should be maintained hygiene and clean now nowadays these processes have mechanized earlier most of the uh, activities done by humans only so now it is most probably nowadays it is mechanized machines are used so it reduces the chance of direct contact of the produce with the hand so direct human contact come ho gaya okay apart from this the three most important to ensure these stringent measures there should be regular inspection of inspection to identify and rectify the problem and regular visit by a veterinary doctor right a regular visit by a veterinary doctor is most essential as every cattle should be disease free so to ensure that the veterinary doctor visiting is most important so these are the some most important points in the dairy farm management by following these rules we can improve the quality and the quality of the milk so this is about the dairy farm management right it includes the management of cow buffaloes and goats right now that the next is a poultry farm management Now what is poultry farm management the poultry is a class of domesticated fowl that is birds used for meat and eggs ducks and chickens especially poultry is the class of domesticated fowl used for meat and eggs that typically includes chickens and ducks and sometimes turkey and geese turkey and geese now in the poultry management there are different types of chickens are there the poultry birds exclusively grown for meat they called as broilers jo sirf meat production ke liye develop kiye jaate hain unko hum bolte hain broilers example polymorph rox ye high class breed hai polymorph rox is a high quality of breed which is produced for the meat ye chicken type breed hai layers these are the only female fowls which helps to produce eggs that means layers ko sirf egg production ke liye produce kiya jata hai poultry farm mein har layer har ek female fowl grows ek anda deti so all these layers artificially induced by giving them injections to produce daily one egg so they are layers then cockerel these are the young male fowl and rooster these are mature male fowl and pullets is young hen of less than 1 year so these are different names are there broilers layers cockerel rooster pullet now broilers are especially grown for the meat production and the layers especially for the egg production now what are the most important rules and components of the poultry farm management first is selection of disease free and suitable breeds that is most important second proper and safe condition that is shelter should be provided with proper hygiene condition proper feed and water that means 
the fodder and the water should be supplied in a proper quantity and it should be maintained with hygiene hygiene and health care are important components of poultry farm management so these are the some important managements of poultry farm right so within the poultry farm there are three types of mainly two types of chickens are there broilers and layers broilers are for the production of meat and the layers are for the production of egg so this is about the two important Managements, dairy farm management and poultry farm management. Then apart from that, the most important thing, animal breeding. Now, animal breeding helps to enhance the food production. How it will? There are most importantly two types of breeding patterns are there: inbreeding and outbreeding. So we'll discuss one by one, right? So first is a uh, what is animal breeding? What is breed? We'll discuss here. Animal breeding. It is producing improved breeds of domesticated animals by improving their genotypes through selective mating. Animal breeding is a process by which we can produce improved breeds of domesticated animals by improving their genotypes through selective mating. That means. we have to use some conventional and some artificial methods now here what are the most important objectives why we should produce improved breeds of domesticated animals that is first increased production of superior quality of milk meat eggs etc whatever the output is coming from the animal husbandry industry it should be qualified it should be fulfill the all the quality measures second improved growth rate third improved resistant to various diseases next productive life should be increases and the reproductive rate should be also increased right first is a milk meat and egg should be produced with superior quality the growth rate should be increased all the domesticated animals should have a most high level of resistant power against various diseases the productive life should be there and their their reproductive rate should be also high so these are the most important objectives now what is actually breed the breed is a group of animals related by decent or similar in most characters such as general appearance features size etc it's a breed it's a group of decent characters with similar in most characters so there are most important two types of breeding are there types of breeding patterns inbreeding and outbreeding so breeding types there are inbreeding and outbreeding these are the most important two types of inbreeding uh, breeding patterns are first is inbreeding now what is inbreeding mating of more closely related individuals of same breed for four to six generations right in mating there are one male and one female is there now the male and female should be belongs to the same type of breed and this relation should be similar up to 4 to 6 generations that means their ancestors are same for 4 to 6 generations that is called inbreeding the mating of more closely related individuals of same breed for 4 to 6 generations that means from parental side and some maternal side that is from male and female side their ancestors are belongs to the same breed for four to six generations that kind of breeding is called inbreeding evaluate the progeny obtained and identify superior males and females among them for future mating how can we do this superior females and superior males are identified and mated 
Now, what is the use of these superior females and superior males? Superior females is responsible for the production of high amount of milk, high quantity of milk per lactation. Now, what is lactation? Lactation is a period of milk production. Okay. So, and superior males responsible for the production of superior progenies. They give rise to a superior progeny. So, superior males and superior females, both are belongs to the same breed. That means their ancestors belongs to the same breed for four to six generations. That kind of breeding is called as inbreeding within the same breed. Now, what are the advantages? Inbreeding increases homozygosity. Now, what is homozygosity? If the breeding is takes place in the same kind of breed, the same characters will come in every generation. That is homozygosity, same type of characters. So inbreeding increases homozygosity within the breed. Like it involves few glands. That means it always are similar. And every generation, the animals always similar. That is called pure line. There is no hybrid as because there is no other breed involved in the reproduction. So it is always follow the pure line breeding. Then it accumulates superior genes. That means after every generation, if we follow the inbreeding, in every new generation, the superior genes are accumulated more and more, but also threatens to accumulate harmful recessive genes. That means every individual has two types of genes, dominant genes and recessive genes. We'll discuss about the dominant and recessive genes in the topic in the chapter genetics. Right? So, dominant genes and recessive genes. So, if the dominant and superior genes are accumulated along with the, the recessive genes also get accumulated, but sometimes they can eliminate it by the selection. Now, selection that means the selection of superior males and superior females. So, while selecting these superior males and superior males, we can eliminate the recessive ones. So by doing this, we can eliminate the recessive genes from that breed. Now, these are the advantages. But apart from this, one more important point is there that is disadvantage. Now, what is disadvantage? Inbreeding depression. Continuous inbreeding may reduce the fertility and productivity. This problem is called inbreeding depression. Agar hum sirf inbreeding pe depend hai. Or continuously, a key breed ko bar bar hum reproduce kar rahe hai. So, kud generation ke baad, 4, 5, 6, 7 generations ke baad, jo nahi progeny aayegi, uski productivity or fertility mein reduction ho sakta hai. That is called inbreeding depression. So, hume do type ke breeding patterns follow karne ka. Inbreeding along with the outbreeding. So, if we follow inbreeding for three to four generations, then we have to focus on outbreeding to produce new quality of breed by hybrid technology. So now, so this is about the inbreeding, the steps, advantages and disadvantages. Now, if we move to the next one, that is outbreeding. That means outbreeding is a technique by which we can overcome the problem of inbreeding depression. Inbreeding depression ke problem se hai, hum overcome kar sakte hai. Is problem ko hum kar sakte hai. Is problem ko kam karne ke hume outbreeding ka tarika istamal karna. So what is outbreeding? Now we'll discuss outbreeding. Now it is the mating or breeding of unrelated animals. In inbreeding humne dekha male or females are belongs to the same breed, that means their ancestors are similar in four to six generations. That means they are belongs to the same breed. But here, the animals which are involved in the breeding are belongs to the different breeds. That's called unrelated animals. It provides a solution to inbreeding depression. So, based on the pattern of outbreeding, Three types of outbreeding are there. Outcrossing, crossbreeding, interspecific 
high pre digestion out crossing cross breeding and inter specific high pre digestion now what is out crossing it is the mating between animals of same breed but not having common ancestors on either side of the pedigree for four to five generations in breeding may be humne same breed liya out crossing may be same breed liye lekin jo animals hum isme select kar rahe hain breeds ke unke ancestors alag theek hai breed ek hi hai lekin unke ancestors alag hai that is called out crossing so it is usually used for those animals which have below average productivity and growth rate and the offspring which are obtained by this cross is called out cross it is done to increase the milk production growth rate in the cattle and beeves so out cross is somewhat similar in one most important point that is in inbreeding and out crossing the mating partner should be belongs to same breed but the difference is in the inbreeding the mating partners ancestors are same for four to five generations but in case of out crossing they should not be same that means they should not have common ancestors and the whatever the progeny we are obtaining by this out crossing is called out cross and out cross is majorly used for production of milk and the growth rate to increase the growth rate of cattle and the beef so this is about the out cross okay so there are three types are there out breeding may out crossing cross breeding and inter specific hybridization now there is a one difference in the in breeding and out cross in out crossing and in breeding similar is the same breed but difference is they should not have common ancestors in out cross now if you follow the out cross breeding the second one here the mating partner should be different that means they belongs to the different breeds different breeds so here it is a cross breeding it is the mating between superior male of one breed with superior female of another breed the superior quality of the both of breeds combined and this is known as hybrid vigor hybrid vigor what is hybrid vigor vigor right this is the most important point hybrid vigor hybrid vigor means whatever the progeny obtaining that progeny is more efficient in all the qualities as compared to their parents the progeny so formed is called hybrid and hybrid may be used as it per may be the further subject to inbreeding so cross breeding mein hum do superior male aur females ko le rahe lekin wo they should belongs to the two different breeds so if they are belongs to two different breeds that crossing pattern is called hybridization aur hybridization ki jo offspring ya progeny produce ho rahi hai usko hum bolte hain hybrid vigor that means whatever the progeny is produced by this cross or hybridization that is more effective more efficient in all the qualities as compared to the parents because both are superior male and females with respect to their breeds but when we are comparing two superior characters these two superior characters combine to form a one more superior character that is most highly superior than their parents that is called hybrid vigor one example is given here hsardel sheep hsardel sheep is a hybrid of bikaneri eaves and merino rams which is developed in a punjab right i'll show you the figures here this is a an example of cross breeding hsardel जो नीचे दिए गए है वो हिसार डेल है ऊपर दो शिप दो शिप है लेफ्ट साइड और राइट साइड लेफ्ट साइड की है 
बीकानेरी ईव और राइट साइड की है मेरिडो राम ये दो अलग अलग ब्रीड्स हैं बीकानेरी ईव इज अ सुपीरियर ब्रीड एंड आल्सो मेरिडो राम इज आल्सो अ सुपीरियर ब्रीड बाय डूइंग अ मेटिंग बिटवीन दीस टू वी हैव ऑब्टेन वन मोर सुपीरियर क्वालिटी दैट इज कॉल्ड इजार्डे एंड इट वाज डेवलप्ड इन पंजाब राइट सो दिस इज अ मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट एग्जांपल ऑफ क्रॉस ब्रीडिंग Now this hazard is considered as hybrid figure. Now, if you compare them, so this in between is showing. Okay. So this is a most common example of hybrid figure. Okay. So this is a most important example of hybrid figure. Okay. So this is a most important example of hybrid figure. Okay. So this is a most important example of hybrid figure. Okay. So this is a most important example of hybrid figure. Okay. So this is a most important example of hybrid figure. Okay. दो अलग अलग स्पीशीज के बीच रिप्रोडक्शन किया जाता है दिस इज ऑल्सो काइंड ऑफ हाइब्रिड बट हियर द सुपीरियर मेल्स एंड फीमेल्स आर बिलोंग्स टू टू डिफरेंट स्पीशीज दिस इज कॉल्ड इंटरस्पेसिस और इंटरस्पेसिफिक हाइब्रिडाइजेशन राइट इंटरस्पेसिफिक हाइब्रिडाइजेशन नाउ बेस्ट एग्जांपल इज गिवन हियर म्यूल एंड हिंडी Mule is an interspecific hybrid of male donkey and female horse, right? Male donkey and female horse, and it is a just opposite that that is female donkey and male horse. So both are superior. both males and females are superior but both are belongs to different species donkey and horse so this is a example of interest apart from that uh, one more example is there ligon or tigon aapko shayad naam yaad hai ligon and tigon what is ligon and tigon Ligon is a hybrid produced between the mating between male lion and female tiger. Male lion and female tiger mating करने के बाद जो progeny produce उसको बोलते हैं ligon. और male tiger और female lion इसके progeny को हम बोलते हैं tiger. So it is one more example of interspecies hybridization. so within the outbreeding there are three categories are there <coughs> outcross cross breeding and interspecific breed in breeding mein <coughs> parents should be belongs to same breed and their ancestors also should be common for four to six generations outbreeding mein first hai outcrossing outcrossing mein bhi the parent should be belongs to same breed but their ancestors should not common for four to six generations and the output is called outcross then outcrossing uh, then cross breeding is is a hybrid that means the mating partner should belongs to two different breeds and interspecies that means the mating partner should belongs to the different species so these are the three most important categories of outbreeding and the inbreeding and outbreeding is used to overcome the problem of inbreeding depression inbreeding depression ek aisi cheez hai jiski wajah se quality or quantity reduce ho jati hai the quality of the milk production quantity of the milk production and the fertility of the animals is reduced because of the continuous inbreeding that is called inbreeding depression and inbreeding depression ko overcome karne ke liye us problem ko solve karne ke liye hame second method ka use karna hai that is called outbreeding which involves outcrossing cross breeding and inter specific breeding or hybridization so this is about the today's lecture